Welcome, in this video I'm going to talk about the number of bins um, using Python. In a separate video I've talked about how to actually create bins or, or use them, but deciding on how many bins you need is a whole uh, field in itself. Uh, I'm using JupyterLab via Anaconda and a Python 3 kernel and be specific uh, I'm using Python version 3.9.12 here, but this probably also works with earlier versions Now uh, Depending on the number of bins that you actually use you can see that a uh, histogram can look quite different so it's usually more complex than many people think at first sight. Um, a very good read on this is a dissertation from uh, Lo Haka in 2007. Um, it's in the reference list uh, below. Um, but just to give you some ideas, um, the, I'm going to use some example data. So I'm going to import pandas. If you've never used uh, pandas before, you should run a pip install pandas first. And then I can use the read CSV function to um, yeah, read my data, which is actually from the General Social Survey 2012, uh, somewhat adjusted, and uh, head gives you the first five records. Um, I only need one field, the age field, uh, a numeric field, and uh, I'm just going to select that. Then I'm going to drop any missing values using drop NAs. Then replace because there's an 89 or older category in there. So I'm going to replace that with 90. Could have done 89. Um, and I change all values to numeric so that everything is really a number. Now, on deciding on a number of bins, some authors will simply give you a rule of thumb. Uh, I, I've looked at 42 introductory statistical textbooks. Um, 28 gave some different guidelines. Uh, 12 actually set 5 to 20, 10 set 5 to 15, 3 set 10 to 20, and uh, a few, uh, and one set 4 to 20, one set 5 to 10, and one set 6 to 15. So it varies quite a bit. Uh, two textbooks simply just mentioned around 10, and six did not have any clear guideline. I like the 5 to 15 myself a bit, so uh, one source for that could be Herkenhoff and Folkley. Uh, others, like Ishikawa, they let it depend on the, the sample size. So depending on your sample size, you then uh, get a range of different number of bins, usually devoted to K, or devoted to the assigned to K and um, others actually came up with some formulas now there are quite a few there's the square root choice which simply takes the square root of the sample size and these strange looking brackets with only the upper end uh, is the ceiling so that means that you round to the nearest uh, to the up to the nearest integer uh, Sturgis uh, takes the log base 2 out of the sample size and then adds 1. Uh, there's a quadratic root, uh, which is the quadratic root of the sample size, then multiplied with 2.5. Terrell and Scott, they use the cubic root uh, of 2 times the sample size. There's something that that dissertation called exponential, which is basically uh, the same as Sturgis, but then without the plus 1. And there is Velleman who um, says, well, if uh, n is below 100, then use 2 times the square root of n. And if um, otherwise, use it 10 times the log base 10 out of n. Uh, this k should actually not be k, it should be uh, n. And here the same, it's n is greater than or uh, is equal to, or here uh, less than or equal to. Now, luckily, Python can do all of these. These functions are not too complicated. Uh, the math library actually has a ceiling function. And the other ones that we see are the cubic, uh, are the roots, which are just uh, the same as to the power of a third, and here to the power of uh, a quarter. Uh, log2 is a function in the math library, and also we can use log and then 10 uh, to get the log uh, base 10. So, not too complicated, I just import the math library that comes with Python and then the, uh, set the sample size, the length of the field and then just follow that formula every time. So for each of the 
once discussed earlier it's fairly straightforward and here are the results you can see that they vary quite a lot now uh, slightly more complicated is Duane and there's quite some discussion on this if you google on it you'll probably end up on a stack overflow uh, page where they uh, discuss um, or stats exchange I think where they discuss it quite in detail but um, at first it looks fairly similar with using the log 2 but here it's using also the skewness now the standard deviation of the skewness is this formula which looks scary but it's only using the sample size and a square root so that's not a big problem uh, but the skewness itself that G1 uh, there are two versions for this actually. There is an unadjusted version that yeah, has different formulas. Um, it's summing up um, from uh, each of them the, um, the difference between the score and the average divided by the population standard deviation, which is defined as the sum of the uh, difference with the mean squared each time divided over n. Uh, that all then gets cubed and then you sum all of that up and you take the average of all that. The adjusted version is slightly different. Um, as you might notice here it's dividing it by S, uh, which is the sample standard deviation, which is dividing it by N minus 1. And you divide, uh, you multiply this with this vector over here. Now Duane actually uses this first one, so that's the one I'm going to be using as well. Um, Looking at that, uh, I need the average, which is simply the sum divided by the uh, length, so the number of scores. Then the sigma for the skewness, that was this formula over here. So that's 6 times and then n minus 2 over n plus 1 times n plus 3. And we take the square root out of all of it, which is the same as to the power of a half. Then we need the population uh, standard deviation, so that's this formula, where we can say, well, we'll do uh, each score minus the average, uh, we square that result, uh, we sum all of those up, divide it by the number of items, and again, then take the square root. Then finally, I can calculate this one, which is uh, the score minus the average, uh, then we cube that result, and we divide it over n, uh, and then we multiply that, w uh, divide that by, sorry, um, uh, the sample size times that standard deviation to the power of 3. So basically I'm using this formula. Finally, we can then calculate that Duane, uh, which is then 1 plus log 2 of the sample size plus log 2 of 1 plus and then this fraction. So that's exactly done here, and finally we then get a result which in this case turns out to be 15. But there's more. There are also some people who use the get a formula for width, for, for example Scott and Friedman Diaconis. They have uh, the width, H I, I call that, and then they have these two formulas where IQR is the inner quartile range. Um, and if we know the width, we can actually also uh, set, because um, we can then set the number of categories. We take the range, the maximum minus the minimum, divide that by the width, and then we have our number of categories if we round this usually up. All right, so uh, these two formulas are fairly straightforward. Um, we simply do for Scott, um, I first set the maximum, uh, the minimum, and the range. And then for Scott, I take the sample standard deviation, which is the score minus the average squared, sum all of those up, divided by n minus 1, and then take the square root out of all of it. And then just follow the Scott formula, which is 3.49, multiplied by that sample standard deviation, so that's the numerator, and the denominator is then the uh, number of data points to the power of a third, which is the same as taking a square uh, cube root. Then for Friedman and Diaconis, um, we need the quartile range, the inner quartile range. Um, that can be done by taking the uh, third quartile minus the first quartile. Um, luckily NumPy, so that's why I'm importing NumPy here, <coughs> sorry, uh, has a, a percentile function. 
and if you just set 75% and 25% that will give you the two quartiles subtract the two and you have your inner quartile range then it's a matter of two times that inner quartile range divided by the cube root again of the sample size um, then I take the range divided by the width and I have my number of categories so Finally, we get 15 and an error because NumPy wasn't defined because I should have first loaded this one and then run this one. All right, um, the NumPy function histogram bin edges actually has a few of the rules discussed um, and they produce uh, almost the same result. Just one more because they uh, uh, also have the cutoff points, either the the lower bound of the first category or the upper bound of the last category that you also need uh, if you want to see all the bits so the same results uh, as you can see the Scott rule for example has here 16 and mine's at 15 because there are 16 cutoff points which means there are 15 bits there are more complex techniques like uh, Shimasaki and Shinomoto <laughs> Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, they actually say to optimize the following. Uh, you look at the average of the frequencies if you're using that amount of bins. Uh, multiplied by 2. Uh, and subtract the standard deviation of those frequencies. And divide it by the width uh, squared. So um, this means we'll need to run over a different amount of number of bins. And just try to find the minimum. Now I have written here some uh, code that tries to do that. Uh, so it simply uh, sets the the end, the sample size, the the range, the maximum minus the minimum, uh, and then it starts building up that cost function. It looks at the the width. If you're using that number of categories, uh, the the average and then just uses the pandas cut function to actually create the cut points uh, it then uses uh, the to calculate the variance that's um, the part over here and then um, it uh, the calculates the cost it adds that um, and then after it's done it for all the ones in the range it selects the minimum and looks up the k and the h that corresponds to that now unfortunately this uh, if I choose maximum bins 200 it simply spits out 199 if I would use uh, 500 let's say 200 to 500 um, it takes a little bit longer but then I will spit out 499 so somewhere it just keeps on selecting the maximum um, I tried looking at different data which is non-numeric so here is an example of that and then it does actually give me something else than the maximum width um, the authors actually suggest that if you have integers like I had with my age then it's better to also have only integer widths so here's a function that looks at the uh, binning width so if you give it a certain width um, and uh, a certain X what this will do is it will create those bins using that specific uh, width it simply runs it up all the way to the maximum and then I can do the same as before but now use uh, the, the the range going uh, with my minimum width uh, and then the width will always be an integer uh, all the way up to the range uh, unfortunately when I run this one Oh, the counter is probably not defined. I should first load all of these. Uh, unfortunately, it still then only gives me two, which I doubt is correct. So uh, I've contacted the author. Perhaps he can find out my mistake in my code. Perhaps you can find a mistake in my code. Perhaps it's correct and this doesn't this technique doesn't work for um, my particular data set. Um, these are the references. I still hope that this video was helpful and um, if you have any suggestions or improvements, uh, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next video.